expert news and views on the low country real estate scene. The Brian Beatty Real Estate Show on 1250 WTMA. Welcome back, Charleston. Thanks again for tuning in to the Brian Beatty Real Estate Show here on the Big Talker 1250 WTMA. We've been talking this morning about dealing with difficult situations and people in real estate. I, I just shared a story of mine on uh, something I went through when I sold my previous home and and how much I wanted the the emotion of the transaction to kind of fuel my rage because I had I was very upset. But uh, cooler heads prevailed, sold the home, got a great price for it, sold it for the highest price per square foot in my neighborhood at the time. Um, and moved on to a beautiful home that we're going to raise our family in, have been for the past several years. And and that was the the, the big picture, the aha moment that, you know, look, I, I understand that real estate is a stressful, emotional process. Any single real estate agent out there, by the way, that says, oh, come work with my team, we'll offer you a stress-free transaction, is they're probably going to sell their first home because they don't realize how how stressful moving can be. There is no such thing as a stress-free transaction unless you're giving a home away to somebody. So um, I want to continue this discussion. But again, if you have some questions, if you want to talk to me about real estate, and it doesn't have to be on this particular topic, um, but what we're really talking about at this point is is the, the value of a real estate agent past the marketing, you know, access to the MLS, uh, some of the things that we do to, to impress people, quite frankly. The value of a real estate agent is in the things that you don't necessarily get to write down on paper, but that come with experience. The things that I do to help my clients through challenging situations and and come out on the other side on top. You know, the, the ability for me to problem solve and deal with difficult people, frankly, is one of the things that makes our team really successful. Because dealing with difficult people in difficult situations um, is going to make or break you and your success in a deal. And I want you to think about that for a second because that really is true. That's a true statement. Are you going to buckle and bend and um, let somebody take advantage of you or a situation? Or are you going to stand your ground? Have you had experience in doing that? You know, I know a ton of people... Uh, that are in my life that when whenever something happens, uh, whenever they have an opportunity to stand up for either themselves or for what's right, they just they just take it on the chin. Now that takes a lot of self control, and there's a a portion of that that obviously is very commendable because you have the self discipline to not lash out. On the other side of that coin, though, you're consistently being taken advantage of by other people that know how to play the game. And there are agents out there that know how to play the game. They help their clients do that. Classic example uh, is what's happened in our market over the past several years where, you know, we put a property on the market. You know, let's say we're selling a house, we're helping somebody sell a house. We put it on the market. Boom. A bunch of interest, several offers. They put it under contract. They give us a great price for the house. But then when the home inspection comes, they literally ask for every single item on the home inspection report. And they say, hey, you know what? If you're not going to address all of these items, then you can reduce the price by something that is more than what it would cost to fix all of those things. Or we're going to walk away. And the seller at that point in time is already two weeks invested into the thought that their home is going to sell. So they're looking at other things to buy or now that their home is under contract, they're ready to make an offer on something else that they've had their eyes on for a while. Um, and rather than you know get derailed from this new process of actually being able to move into the new home they want to buy, they're threatened with going back to square one if they don't abide by these buyers' list of demands. That's just one of probably dozens of examples I can come up with right now. But how do you deal with these situations? You know, obviously listening is, is step number one in dealing with you know, unreasonable people. Everyone wants a, a situation in which they feel heard, right? No progress can take place until the other person feels acknowledged. And while you're listening, you have to, you have to really focus on what the other person is saying, not what you want to say next. That's what listening is. And of course, you have to stay calm and you can't, you can't judge them. You don't know what that person's going through. And chances are, if, if a person's acting really unreasonable, they're likely feeling some sort of vulnerability. 
or, or fear. Uh, but that's when we come in. We have to look for the hidden need. What is it that person is really trying to get? What are they trying to avoid and what are they trying to accomplish? Sometimes it's just better for the real estate agents to get out of the way and let the clients talk. And I'm, I'm 100% serious when I say that. I, don't, I, I want to be the shield that uh, covers my client and, and prevents them from uh, having something said to them or them saying something or, or them being subjected to a situation in which we have now revealed something that we shouldn't have or answered a question in a certain way that harms us from a negotiating standpoint. But not every client needs that much uh, protection, quite honestly. They've been through this a time or two before. They know what they're doing. They know how to communicate with people. I had something like this happen very recently that's very similar. We had a buyer that um, had made some demands after putting a property under contract. The demands, frankly, were unreasonable. There was no benefit to... uh, abiding by their demands and what they were trying to accomplish. Ultimately it did not matter. I'm not going to get into specifics because it's too, too close to you know the, the transaction, but here we're, the seller and I are talking and the seller's like, you know, I'm really starting to get frustrated because I don't understand what this person's trying to accomplish. Why do they want me to do this? What do they want this uh, report to say that would satisfy them? The last thing I want to do is put together some information and spend my money trying to solve a problem when they haven't told us the criteria for which that problem would be solved for them. And I know I'm being super vague here, but the point I'm trying to make is that sometimes real estate agents are, they add to the stress, they add to the emotion, they, uh, they get in their client's own way, they stir the pot. And sometimes it's just, you know, detrimental to a transaction. So in that, you know, example I was just giving you, I called the other agent. I said, hey, look, I just think we need to have the seller and the buyer talk to each other about this because something's not happening. The the questions that I'm asking you that are then being asked of the buyer, there's something being lost in translation. So the seller would like to talk to the buyer directly. And she said, yeah, that's fine. Let's, we, we can, we can get that done. And so sometimes it's, It takes maturity in this business to understand that it's not always the best course of action for the real estate agent to control everything, to be the person that's the umbrella over it all. Uh, We want to make sure that we're having careful conversations and that we're not saying anything that can harm ourselves or our clients or the situation. But sometimes we just don't need to be that intense. Uh, But you have to look for the hidden need is really the point there. And so... Uh, when you're dealing with these difficult situations and difficult people, obviously saying things like, um, I understand, usually makes things worse. Uh, obviously, you need to say something more like, you know, tell me more so I can better understand how to how to help you through this. And um, there are a bunch of other pieces of advice that I can give here because I, this is one of the things I train my agents on is, is how to deal with difficult people and difficult situations. Not everybody that wants to buy a home or sell a home has these, you know, dreams set to, you know, really nice music where people are dancing around in the kitchen of a new home. And, um, it's just this beautiful blue sky outside and kids are playing in the backyard. Sometimes people are extremely stressed. They're going through a divorce. They're in financial ruin. You just don't know what people are going through and what's causing somebody to buy or sell real estate which is why real estate agents, in my opinion, need to do a better job of remaining emotionally neutral. It's our job to help you understand how your decisions through our consultation uh, impact you. We're not here to tell you what to do. We're here to tell you, here's what's going to happen if we decide to do this. I just want you to understand your ramifications. And what's really important is are, are the real estate agents that are willing to have difficult conversations with their clients. Because a lot of these situations that I come across could have been prevented had the agent just taken the time to have a difficult conversation. 
I know that it's tough for some of these agents that, hey, maybe that maybe they only have three listings, and if they tell two of their three listings that they're overpriced, and those sellers say, well, you know what, we're not going to sell it for that price. Well, now that agent only has one listing. Now they only have a third of the properties to market to try and find more business for themselves. Because not every listing agent out there has the sole focus of selling your house. Sometimes it's a marketing ploy. And so I want to get into that when we when we come back here. But if you have questions for me about this process, if, if you've tried selling your house and you've had some struggles and you've got some stories to share or questions to ask, uh, or if you've had some interesting stories in dealing with challenging people, give me a call here in the studio, 843-556-1250. 843-556-1250 or of course listingsincharleston.com is how you reach me off air or uh, call my cell 843-408-009 stick around we'll be right back hear the Brian Beatty Real Estate Show every Saturday morning at 9 and each Sunday morning at 10 on 1250 WTMA and WTMA.com